Hello and welcome to the video. This is a first look review and overview of this thing here. This is the new Nano Hawk from Emacs. They've classed it as a beginner indoor nano racing drone and it's the lightest quadcopter that they've ever made. On the website it says it's about 20 grams. The one here is 22 grams without the battery but about 31 grams with. It's a little lightweight flying machine. Although it's aimed at the beginner, it has an awful lot of capabilities and is actually a fantastic way to get into flying in doors or maybe if you are a flyer outdoors and we're coming into the winter months and you want something to goof around with in the house this could be a perfect choice for that too. So while I unbox it let me go through some of the specs. So as I've said this is a very lightweight model. It comes in at about 20 grams. Now I'm a fan of the Emacs family of products in this. Things like the Baby Hawks and the Tiny Hawks are some of my favourites in this class. Emacs tend to put an awful lot of thought into building these things and tuning beta flight typically that comes on them. So I was fascinated to get this in to give it a go because I've had quite a few of these small models and check out my sub 250 gram playlist for all the ones that I've reviewed. Everything from 2S models up to 6S of this kind of class but this is a super small version it's only 1s now underneath it's got a carbon fiber subframe and then you can just see the ESC board under that with some nice straps to hold the battery in place um, well thought through on here is a little Emacs Nano 3 camera loads of room but the thing that really strikes you is how incredibly lightweight it is these are 0802 19,000 kV motors with Avia Nano Hawk 31 millimeter propellers. And this will have it in a hover, even on 1S, at about a quarter throttle. Included in the pack, you get a battery charger with a couple of different battery connectors. And talking of battery connectors, in here there's a couple of adapter leads, and you might need these if you want to charge the batteries on an existing charger that you have and I tend to use my TBS one here and that's because this again is using the GMB 27 connector a more robust connector that I'm starting to see on more modern models only one battery in here sadly with that connector on it a single cell 300 milliamp hour lipo battery and that's going to give you three three and a half minutes of flying about and then the only other thing that's in here is a spare set of props but you're going to have to work really hard to break the ones that's already on it the usb port to plug it into beta flight is very nicely presented at the side so it's very easy to plug it in and you can plug it in while the battery's connected if you need to do that as well and we'll have a look at how it's set up uh, Look at that all moving beautifully. Now, enable expert mode, and I'll go through each of these settings. So ports is set like this. So the only thing that's really set up is TBS smart audio for the video transmitter. And everything looks pretty standard. D-shot, motor stop is set like that. Uh, oh, interesting, gyro and PID loop frequencies are set at 8 and 4K. Now this is an F4 base flight controller on here, um, but it isn't pushing the CPU very hard at all, which is great, because it's beta flight 4.2 as well, which is nice. SPI receiver, bit of a shame. Um, as long as you're flying around um, reasonably close, SPI is absolutely fine, and the rest of it is set like this. Air mode is permanently enabled, so no real surprises in this part at all. Power and battery is set like this. Fail safe is set to drop, which is what we want. PID tuning is set like this. Uh, there's a link in the description to the dump and diff files from this model if you want to have a look at how Emacs have set it up on Betaflight 4.2 because it flies very nice. Receiver settings are set like this, which is pretty much how my radio is out of the box, which is brilliant. The modes are set up beautifully as well with angle and horizon all set. And there's even the beeper set too, so you can make it sound, make a noise if it disappears down the back of the sofa or the cat gets it and you can't find it. On-screen display isn't bad. Um, I moved a couple of things around, but I like the way that they're keeping it relatively uncluttered. I'm just going to change video transmitter on mine to my default channel on my Fat Shark goggles and uh, 25 milliwatts is the maximum power on this little quad but for zooming around uh, indoors that's going to be perfect again i'm going to do dump and diff in a file links in description so what's it like to fly well 
it is very similar to all the other Emacs products in this class in that it flies absolutely spectacularly. Now, I've had a couple of models similar to this in recently, nowhere near as lightweight that we're using 2S batteries or two 1S batteries in series to give a 2S pack and we're only giving similar kind of flight times to this. The really nice thing is is that this thing is hovering at minus 43% throttle on my Tyrannus. That means it's about a quarter throttle will have it hovering beautifully and that means that there's actually more power on this little 1S quad thanks to those motors props and the really light weight than you'd expect from a little model like this. It's quite responsive, the tune is very nice and forgiving, and because of those slightly rubbery bumpers on the edge, it just bounces off stuff, and it is absolutely amazing fun to fly. The really nice thing is, is because it has that turn of power, if you have a reasonably calm day, uh, then you can get it out and fly it around. I wouldn't want to fly it in particularly high winds, but it is a really versatile, capable little model. So I think Emacs are probably under-egging it a little bit, calling it a beginner model, because even those of us that have been flying for a long time will have a big stupid grin on your face after you've flown it around the house and scared the cat. So in summary, what do I think? There's an awful lot to like on this. This is a classic Emacs product. It just delivers in spades. Uh, the great Emacs quality is here. The way it's put together, the thought, and the choices for the components and build quality is really top draw. I love the way that it flies at only a quarter throttle and how lightweight and tough it is. It feels like it should be very fragile, but it's actually not. There's a good image from the camera. Considering its size, it's performing very nicely. And they've also managed to get a pretty decent tune in Betaflight on Betaflight 4.2. And that's nice to see. So many of the models I've had in recently have not bothered to get to grips with Betaflight 4.2 and have relied on older versions of Betaflight like 3.5.7 to set up their indoor whoop style models on. Everything is here if you're a learner and want to learn to do this. But as I said at the beginning, even if you're an experienced pilot, there's an awful lot of stuff in here to like. And because it's Emacs, you know it's not going to break after two flights. Only a handful of things to be aware of, really. Um, obviously, it doesn't come in a box. It's using the new battery connector, so be aware of that if you do have chargers already. However, the charger that comes with it and the adapter leads means that that shouldn't be an issue. There is only one battery in the box, so you're going to wait a long time for that to charge for the next three, four minutes of fun zooming around the house. Definitely order yourself some more of these batteries. Make sure you get the ones with the right connectors. And the last point is, it is a very fun model to fly. Warn your family. It's one of those things that once you start flying around, you'll have more and more fun with it, and you'll end up setting yourself up obstacle courses out of all the furniture around the house. So this one has a five pill out of five pill rating. I'm going to start doing this from now on just so it's easy to see which what stuff I really like. There's not a lot that I don't like about this. I'm not a big fan of the SPI connector and it's a shame it doesn't come in a nice box to keep it protected. But apart from that, this is awesome. When I do my festive present ideas list in a month or two, this is definitely going to be one on that list. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to Author Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.